Hello guys, welcome to our channel Inspiring Minds. Before discussing the main topic, I would like to thank all of you for helping us cross the 20,000 subscribers on YouTube. It really means a world to us. Thank you for showing all the love and support all these years. So in today's topic, I am going to tell you how to study pharmacology effectively in med school. And I can guarantee by the end of this video, you will have all the tips and resources to ace pharmacology in your med school. So hang on with me till the end of the video to know all the secrets that I will be revealing today. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Pharmacology has to be one of the favorite subject of the students in entire MBBS course. But the sad part is this is not the case. There are always two ways of studying a subject, the correct way and the wrong way. So now I will tell you the wrong way to learn pharmacology. So what are the wrong ways to learn pharmacology? Let's discuss that. Step 1. Open KD Tripathi or any book. Step 2. Read the classification. Step 3. Put a lot of efforts to memorize the classification and the drug name. Step 4. Read mechanism of action and instead of understanding it, memorize so that you can vomit it in the next class or in the next exam and get good marks. Step 5. Forget what you read in few days. Step 6. Curse pharmacology for being a dry subject which asks you to memorize the drug name of which half of you can't even pronounce correctly. Now as we have discussed the wrong way, so you must be thinking what is the correct way to study pharmacology. So let's discuss the correct way now. Step 1. Select a topic, let's say anticoagulants. Step 2. Open a physiology book and brush up the coagulation cascade and the different tests that are done to check the different parameters of coagulation pathway. Step 3. Open a pathology book and understand disorders at least the basics. Step 4. Open a pharmacology book and now read the mechanism of action and drug while correlating it with physiology and pathology. Step 5. Read the classification and understand why the drugs were classified in different groups. Step 6. Instead of giving importance to quantity, give importance to quality. You don't need to know thousands of drugs name. Now as we have discussed the correct way to read pharma, you must also know the must know points. Point number one, you must know physiology of autonomous nervous system in depth. Point number two, you must be well versed with all the receptors associated with autonomous nervous system including how each receptor work with secondary messenger system. Step number three, you must understand basic physiology, biochemistry and pathology of the system you are studying and correlate it with pharmacology. Step number four, you must know basic microbiology like bacterial cell wall synthesis, gram negative and gram positive, bacteria and names of the organism with their disease. Pharma becomes a lot easier when common sense is applied to it. For example, common sense number one. The side effect of the drug will be its action. Any antihypertensive drug given in wrong dosage must lead to hypotension. Common sense number two, any drug which decreases the activity of heart like calcium channel blockers must cause heart block if given in high dosage. Common sense number three, anti-metabolite drugs like methotrexate will cause aplastic anemia because it will also block the multiplication of stem cells in bone marrow. Any drug going to work in CNS must always be highly lipid soluble as they has to cross the blood brain barrier. Antipsychotic drugs must lead to Parkinson disease like condition as they block dopamine receptor and then understand that to overcome this problem we came up with newer group of drugs which are a typical antipsychotic. I personally felt addressing what not to do was more important than suggesting what to do. Undirected learning without any clue as to what is the goal of reading a particular piece of literature is an absolute waste of time. Reading heavy books with multiple references to various studies which do not translate to any application is again a disaster. Remembering only nausea and vomiting as the side effects of all drugs and forgetting the specific ones. Not giving 
due importance to remembering the mechanism of action of a particular family of drug having no clue as to what a classification of important drug families spending a lot of time trying to remember doses of unimportant drugs relying heavily on books leaving out other resources like videos flowcharts etc so these were some points which i personally feel a student should not do while studying pharmacology now let's discuss the resources the study material which a student can use from most useful to least useful essentials of medical pharmacology by kd tripathi i must say this is the single most useful resource for studying pharma in mbbs no nonsense most of the topics are straight to the point literally less bs to deal with most drugs start off with the classification of the drug family followed by mechanism of action potential uses adverse reaction and dosage of important drugs now let's move to the next important study resource that is kaplan lectures on pharmacology by dr leonel raymond i cannot em- emphasize enough how important his lectures are not only for usmd but for every student who is studying pharmacology so how to use his videos for studying pharmacology step number 1 take up any topic say anti epileptic drugs go through his lectures on the related topic once you do this read up the same topic in kd tripathi and highlight all the important facts he emphasize in the video step number 3 you will see that all you remember comes down to 30 to 40% of the tripathi book step number 4 now once this exercise is done revise only the highlighted portion of the text and nothing more step number 5 try putting in those videos on your smartphone or ipad and listen to them whenever you feel like i have seen most of the students doing it and it works for them now let's discuss about some other resources uh, that can be useful for studying pharmacology uh, let's discuss first about pharmacology and pharmotherapeutics by satoshkar i have personally not used this book i have seen my friends using this book a lot and it was helpful for them it was little heavier and scarier as compared to kd tripathi so i decided to stay away from it if you think it is a good resource for you and it could be useful then i would suggest you to go ahead with it and use it with raymond lectures i have seen most of the students using basic and clinical pharmacology by katzen in my opinion it is a absolute waste of time and energy completely useless for a medical student in his initial years of training I found it neither useful for MBBS university exams or NEET PG exams after MBBS. Pharma issues of clinical relevance can be completed in general medicine so no use in application to patient care too. My suggestion would be to try to stay a mile away from this heavy book because I don't find it useful for any medical students but this is my personal experience that I'm sharing with you. Some over enthusiastic students in our class tried to take things a little further and decided to live off the rich. They started taking notes from the Goodman and Gilmans, which was much more scarier than the Katzen I mentioned before. Personally, I feel that there is no need to over complicate the things. Life can be kept a lot simple. So stay two miles away from this book unless you want a PhD in pharmacology. Most of the students have quite a valid doubt that what are the resources that can be used for PG preparation. So once you have finished KD Tripathi with Raymond videos, you will have a lot of spare time so you can divert this time to productive NEET PG preparation for pharma. So what you need to do? The most useful resource I have found my friends using is Review of Pharmacology by Gobind Rai Garg. I found it quite useful and it covered most of the topics and previous questions from many repeated exams. This book can be used to test the understanding of the subject once you finish KD Tripathi and lectures by Raymond. Try to start off directly by doing the MCQs and refer to the explanation only for those questions which went wrong, thus saving you a hell lot of time. Don't waste too much time and energy by reading the theory and explanation part. you won't remember anything that way another excellent book of mcq on pharma is conceptual review of pharmacology by ranjan kumar patel 
I have personally not used this book but I have a friend who has used this book and he went on to crack the NEET PG exam in the very first attempt after internship so I am guessing this book is of some use. So you can either choose Gobind Rai or this one and stick to it. Now as we have discussed the main resources for studying pharmacology, we have discussed the do's and don'ts. We have discussed the wrong way and the correct way of studying pharmacology. You must be very clear that pharma is not a difficult subject. But the sad part is there is no integration of any concepts and coordination between the department. Hence pharmacology becomes a very tough subject as it demands the knowledge of other subjects too. In no way I am claiming that this is the only way to study pharmacology or this is the holy grail to ace pharmacology. You can chart your own course with whichever resource you feel works for you. The path may be different but the goal is same for all of us. With that being said, this is all for this video guys. I hope you like the content. If you are new to our channel, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. The growing number gives us the motivation to make more such videos for you. If you want to be instantly notified whenever we upload a new video, so press the bell icon, keep working hard and your dreams will soon become a reality. This is Dr. Ayush co-founder and MD at Inspiring Minds and you just watched Inspiring Minds.